Edentulous patient has thin submucosa over the mid palatal suture. What should be kept in mind during complete denture construction? Relieve the suture region, make the denture thicker, surgical intervention, and add soft tissue liner. Okay, so it's very uh, commonly understood that mid palatine refer the mid palatine suture, that is the connection of the two palatal shelves, is a relief area in a complete denture patient. But sometimes the options are such that you get confused. So relief suture region, yes, is the correct answer. But add soft tissue liner is also technically correct because if there is a relief area and if you put a cushioning effect over it, then it is a right option. But the idea is to go for the most suitable option. So it is to relieve the suture region. So uh, taking a quick revision at the anatomical landmarks of the maxillary arch, the ones in blue are the primary uh, and the secondary stress bearing areas. These green are the relief areas and the red ones are the uh, limiting areas. So we are talking currently about relief areas, so incisive papilla, mid palatine raphae, palatal uh, torus, cuspid eminence, sharp spiny spicules and zygomatic process of maxilla. So these are the six uh, relief areas of maxillary foundation according to voucher. Uh, I can just brush through the stress bearing areas as well. Primary stress bearing areas of maxilla are the posterior lateral slopes of heart palate and uh, residual alveolar ridge and secondary is the Rugen maxillary tuberosity and the limiting areas are the free eye, the sulci the hamular notch and the posterior palatal seal and fovea palatine. So these are the limiting areas. We are talking currently about median palatine raphe or the mid palatine raphe. Now relief areas are usually the ones that have some vital structures underneath nerves or vessels on which pressure cannot be applied. For example, incisive papilla or the second reason why they are going to be relief areas is because their submucosa is very thin. So if the mucosa is very thin, it is easily abraded and it can be easily uh, ulcerated. So that is why you cannot put pressure on these areas. So mid palatine raphe is one of these kind of structures with thin mucosa over it. So if the mucosal layer is thin, you will not want the denture to be in very intimate contact with that area. So that is called relief. Okay. So you see the mid palatine raphe here is prominent. The incisive papilla here is also prominent. So in this case, you are going to make a selective pressure impression. That means you add an additional layer of uh, spacer wax in the custom tray in this relief areas. So the thickness of impression material recording these areas is more and that is why the pressure applied on this area is less. So because these areas are recorded under minimal pressure, the denture will also mimic that because the denture is made according to the final impression. Now the second reason why a mid palatine raphe could be also a relief area is because, because if it is very prominent, then it becomes like a thick uh, object in the bit, in between the palate. So that is like a fulcrum. It acts like a seesaw for the denture and causes the denture to rock. So you don't want a very tight fitting, uh, thick contact between the mid palate and raphe and the complete denture. So that is why option number two is incorrect. Now surgical intervention, if it is very prominent, even then surgical intervention is not required because it is not a kind of fibrosis or an ossification. It is a natural uh, thing. It is not going to be so prominent that it cannot be managed prosthetically. So ideally it should be just managed prosthetically with a with relieving or with having a selective pressure impression. So the correct answer is option number one. You need to relieve the suture area if the submucosa or the mucosa of the mid palatine suture is prominent. So option number one is the correct answer.